Aloha, and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Talk. Gordo the Tech Star here. I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hello, everybody. And our guest today is Grant Miyashiro. My hero. My hero. My, my hero. My hero. My hero. Oh, my hero. Grant, my hero. My hero. Uh, General Manager of Island Signal and Sound. We're going to learn a lot about um, uh, trends in life safety systems today. Yeah. Okay. Pretty cool stuff. We got some news happening on that side and so on. So please, grab a libation, pull up a chair. Have Cheers. A towel. Cheers. You know, and join us in a. Um, and Hillbilly's happy today. 30 minute fun filled show. Here we go. So, oh, we got, oh, we have segments, but before we do the segments, we like, I want to just get a little bit, a little bit of your background. Sure. So, um, where'd you go to school? Kind of like, you know. Um, from the womb. Yeah, yeah. Well, from the womb. From the womb. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that far. He's a young guy. I know, he is true. He's still got his hair. So that's, you know, that's a one-up on us. I guess the guy got that going for yeah. me. So a little background, please. Born and raised in, in Hawaii, Kailua Boy. Oh, uh, oh right on. public school up to sixth grade at Enchanted Lake. What school Lake. you all went to? To Enchanted Lake, and then my, uh, my parents sent me to Iolani. Right oh, like, oh, you sound like it was a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> first, you know, that sixth grade where it was still all boys, that was pretty traumatic. Oh, yeah. that would be tough. But no, yeah. it's just good now. Right and on. Then, um, Graduated, went off to the mainland in L.A. Occidental College. Okay. Uh, majored in math. All right. Didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. Wow. I thought maybe I'd be a teacher or something. And Christian, oh, man. And Christian. <laughs> there's a lot of high-paying jobs. Oh. Math, math teacher. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, gave a gave a, being an actuary a role. Oh. Uh, wow. But ended up falling into fire alarm. Honestly. Uh, interestingly enough, a friend of mine, a fellow classmate, had been hired by Island signal and sound, you know, to help out with marketing things. Right. And this was 92, and they were still using typewriters and really hadn't implemented any computer any stuff. Any computer stuff. So I said, Grant, hey, come over, help us build a database. You need to track our biz and things like that. Okay. And so I was there for about a month uh, building a access database to track bids and things like that. And then, um, you know, they're, they're a fire alarm company, and they said they needed help doing a fire alarm test. Okay. Hey, Greg, can you come out? And, come uh, go test one. Yeah, help you. Yeah, just pull all the pool stations, you know, and that's what I did, and kind of I mean, fell into it. And we know? live and die, no pun intended, mm. or maybe we live, live, live and die by these fire alarm systems oh, and critical. all the signaling uh, systems and things all over the place now. Everywhere. Yes, they are. Condominiums, mm -hmm. office buildings, schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, just think of where they are. We, you know, it's right there. We take it for granted that it's going to work. Yeah, it's, oh, it's there's uh, a lot behind it. We'll get into it, a little it's, bit. It's of everywhere, that. so you never see it. Wow, wow. Well. So, uh, wow, this is going to be cool. So we're good. We'll get. We'll dig a little so, deeper. And speaking of digging a little deeper, okay, we got we got our segment called "You Know Got One Tech Job." Let's see what you got. <laughs> so, <laughs> so these are people that maybe don't have a different, you know, don't can't find or you know jobs like in the tech industry like we have. Mm -hmm. So or, or, ha or shouldn't have one. Or one, shouldn't have one. one. Go, go. So this is a <laughs> <coat> inspector. <laughs> Kill the inspection. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now you look at it closely. Look. Wow. Angus sent me this one. So, um, okay. Yeah. What's Angus been up to? That's interesting. I we'll have to ask about that. Well, you know, something on there. Anyway, so that guy has no tech job and may not have no life after the end of that one. So Man. that was it. That could hurt. That's a tactic. That could hurt. So anyway, and then I got a little bit of news, so I'll do a little bit of news. But what we have got? a scoop on the news Oh, today. that's right. Oh, okay. You're going to be here part of our, um, part of the things that happened. So we have um, found out that there is a uh, um, uh, thing called the uh, Global Natural History Day competition. Yes. Global Natural History Day competition. It was in Shanghai, China this past week. Uh, July 21 through 25, I think it was, or something like this. And so the gold medal winners of that competition are from Hawaii. Wow. 3,000 3, competitors. There it is right here. So 3,000 competitors. Um, um, uh, Kelsey Casabar and uh, Dinah uh, Anabe. Anabe. And she's a chaperone. And then Calvin Rasmussen, who was a guest on our show. Yes. We had him on our show earlier. They were gold medal winners for their um, presentation on on development versus preservation, and they did a thing on the H3's effect on uh, on the cultural landscape. From in their what school? Uh, Kam uh, Kamehameha. They wow. Kamehameha. Atomic. So, so pretty, pretty. Kelvin's got to come back on now. Yeah, so he's got to give us the lowdown. Got to have back on the show. Now the guy in the middle is Kenneth Baring. So you know, it's a name that might sound familiar to some people. So he's a philanthropist. A philanthropist. <laughs> Lips don't work well. That's a long word. I, I'm one syllable. That's all I can handle. Okay. Anyway, he's, he's a <laughs> philanthropist. 
and did a bunch of things to help help these uh, to put this together. Um, and he was a former owner of the Seattle Seahawks. Okay. Oh, wow. He, he probably made some money when he sold them. I he, think he probably Paul made Allen. a few pennies there. So anyway, so congratulations to these um, That's the amazing youngins, man. I tell you. It's, Thousand competitors. Three thousand competitors. Wow. Now, and they're all different divisions, but within their division, they're gold medal winner. That's awesome. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Kelvin's yeah. got to come on and tell us. We got to. We got to hear about it. It's got to oh. be pretty cool. You know, That's his saying. grandson, by the way. Oh yeah. Well, it's not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I try it's to like keep this. I try to make it low key, right? <laughs> so anyway, breaking news. It was breaking news. Uh, and then we do a, we do a little segment. Uh, think Pal Box is. Yeah, a, that was uh, a scoop. I think. That was a scoop. That's good. Now there's another organization called Pal Box that we um, are affiliated with there in, in San Francisco. They do a lot of healthcare HIPAA compliant um, work. Encrypted and, email, right, encrypted and email and stuff like this. And so and you know and, and they just signed an 1800 seat hospital by the way. That's so, atomic. Which is atomic. Great way to them. go, Hawala. Yeah. Wow. So they've they've done something over there. But they were talking about they gave me they always give me updates on what's happening in the security and the healthcare side and so on. So they were saying that the Office of Civil Rights and the Department of Health and Human Services uh, fines healthcare providers for violating patients' medical info. Well, so yeah. yeah, it's big time. And um, it's in huge. 2014, there were 17,000 complaints. Yep. In 2014, um, the um, the OCRs are called. Says that the reason for the documents aren't public, and because of the budget constraints, they're not able to look and do more, more. Oh, there you think they find more? They're going to go after wow. more. So um, anyway, in 2016. Uh, so far, there's been uh, 2.75 million dollars in fines wow. inside to well, doctors, medical operations, and so yeah, on. Yeah, so Hawala's helping them encrypt all our communications, yeah. right? So that's what actually I'm no, that, the 2.75. The 2.75. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. 2.75 million dollar was a penalty to the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Oh, just one, one. fine. Wow. To wow. them, just to one. Yeah. And 16, Healthcare records are so valuable yeah. on the dark web. You know, That's right. I mean, we yeah. talked about that at length. So, and in so. 2015, there was a total of 6.2 million in fines. And, that, you know, and as as of right now, 2016, it's even higher than that. Yeah. So, so. if you're not taking care of your uh, so HIPAA compliant information, you, get a hold of Palbox. You know, a lot of people. You. you know, so I've been heard. That, I've been heard. I've been heard. I've been told that our show gets watched at a couple of senior centers now. And so they should Maybe be making he'll... sure that their do their medical records and their doctors and care providers are, are encrypting, making, encrypting, encrypting and making sure that their medical records are safe. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, doing. He's made great. So he's a local guy. Did he? Where did he go? Did he go anyway, Yalani. No, he's a no. Farring, he went Mil he, No, he went to uh, um, no, not Farrington. Um, Roosevelt. No. <laughs> McKinley. 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 Yeah, McKinley. Yeah, McKinley. McKinley. He's in Silicon Valley now with this yeah, pro yeah, with this yeah. company. So, he's yeah, doing really yeah. well. Yeah, he's so on the show. does well. So anyway, that was uh, that was my news Good of news. the day. So let's come back to so what is what is um, a life safety system? A life safety system is uh, or what we call fire alarm systems. The okay. primary purpose of a life safety system is to get people out of a building in the event of a fire. Okay. Yeah. So it's oh, not, not as opposed to say a fire suppression system, which okay. preserves the building. Um, fire sprinkler isn't really going to help you if you're in the same room because the head melts it. You know, at 135 degrees or something. Yeah, so once it's that hot, you, you're already yeah. smoked. Right, so right. Well, it's done already. <laughs> right, so... <clears throat> you're not comfortable for sure. So, so if it takes a long time to get out of the building. Right. You know, if you need to know ahead of time, because it may take you a few minutes to go downstairs. Right. Uh, the building code requires that you have a fire alarm system to let people know. So there's and, the, and what is you know what's in an alarm? I know there you've got the sound. Mm -hmm. We've heard those. You got mm -hmm. one of those. Well, you got somewhere. the sensors, right? You, you got, got the, the sensors. Yeah. Heat, heat, smoke. Heat, smoke. Then the alarm goes are, off. Are Why did they always go off at two o'clock in the morning? Are there particulate? <laughs> are there like particulate sensors? Do they do they do they track particulates like in the air? Yep. AC systems and stuff. Or is that smoke? Yeah. That, there's there's different ways to detect smoke. Uh, we have photoelectric detectors which. Basically, have a, a chamber. I actually brought one here. Oh, okay. Whoa, yeah. awesome! So, oh, it's show and tell. Nice. Uh, yeah, I thought it's, it's kind of hard to toys. talk about. We're gonna have fun with fire alarm. Usually, those two words don't go together. <laughs> fire alarm and fire. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this is a, a smoke detector inside. You can see a, there's a chamber in here. Mm -hmm. There's an LED that flashes yeah, and yeah. a receiver, and and when it gets obscured, I'm usually set around three percent. Obscuration, it goes into alarm. So it's the uh, the smoke itself that mm -hmm. obscures. It obscures it. So that right. oh, I never knew how they work. That's pretty cool. Right. Unfortunately, there's a lot of other things that can obscure Steam. it. Steam, steam, dust, dust. Yeah, um, when geckos. I, when I overcook my oh okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, when you're when you're cooking, <laughs> when, they go off. Oh yeah, yeah. I've done that. If you weren't cooking at two a.m., it wouldn't go off at two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> 
I wish I could say I haven't done that, but I have. So yeah, when I overfry my scallops and the <laughs> smoke goes off. Yeah, that's part of the dilemma. And it's not hard to turn the damn thing off. Right. Well, um, the fire alarm systems, they vary on the type of building that you have. Mm. Okay. And, and, and truth be told, the best detect you know what the best detector of a fire is? A dog. A pet. A reasonably aware human being. Oh, a reasonably aware. Uh, that's what we say, Well, right. you can sense it, you know. Right, because you're, you're going to know ahead of time, and you're going to know, all oh, that steam versus, you know. That oh, yeah, but, that, yeah, but oh, no, a reasonably aware human being discounts Andrew and uh, already. From sure. that Especially at 2 a.m. Oh, right. We're in trouble already. <laughs> so, so for a small building, you know, we don't always have to have smoke detectors. Okay. Oh. So, so uh, typically a smaller occupancy, <coughs> schools, for instance. Okay. Um, oh, they have, they have, yeah, these are pool stations. Oh, because the people... Right, because the detector. if there's yeah, right, if there's a fire, uh, so I didn't know. So that. the code requires that you have them at all the exits within five feet of the exit. You don't okay. have to go out of your way along the what we call the path of egress. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is what we would call a manual fire alarm system. Okay, and that's the one where you, the human. Right. We call it wetware. Right. Okay. Now <laughs> wetware. <laughs> <laughs> when you got certain occupancies where people are sleeping. Like um, like a residence or a dorm condos, yeah. right. or condos. That's when you need the smoke detector. Well, even these um, uh, assisted living facilities mm -hmm. are coming crop, mm -hmm. cropping up all over. Skilled nursing facilities, which are not quite hospitals. Mm -hmm. So are those are staffed twenty four seven though. They are. That's true. So is it is it the staffing level that, that leads to the requirement of where you can go manual versus um, having uh, you know detectors or? It, it has to do with a, a bunch of different things, like whether you have sprinklers in the building because that will suppress a fire at the source. Now, older buildings don't. A lot of the older buildings don't have sprinkler systems in. in that's them. correct, and that's yes. got to be a challenge. Yes, it is to try to bring because they're. I guess they're in fact not up to code. What mm -hmm. the code is today. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that, that's a funny thing. You know, you keep like we grandfathered life safety. That yeah. just doesn't sound like a good practice. That's, that's to me. what we call it, right? It's grandfathered. You know, so because it was already before the law came up, it was already built. But I mean, this is life safety we're talking about. So, you know, I, I personally am more of a fan of seeing these things change. I'd like to see some sprinklers in houses and stuff mm -hmm. like that myself. Mm -hmm. But because it's life safety, you know, if we save one life, didn't we do our yeah. job properly? Wouldn't it be nice you know? if there were like federal grants that would allow you to bring those buildings that are not at current code up to code? That would be a good spend I of the money. There's a few mm -hmm. states that are are now mandating in homes. Is that correct? The home sprinklers, or are they talking yeah, the, about it? Yeah, that's actually the, the the building code. It's it's a building code for new construction. For new construction. Yeah. 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 Well, imagine, imagine having sprinklers in your house. I mean, just think of that. Well, you guys must be busy with all the stuff going on in Kakaako. Oh yes, we are. That's six thousand <laughs> units going mm -hmm. in that oh, yeah. down there. Right. And then whatever. Now and 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 the current code. Well, we'll talk a little bit about code in, in segment two. There's a grant, yeah. Grant's a code wizard, I'll tell you it's that. It's a code so wizard? We've had a few talks about that. Yeah, well, <laughs> a code wizard? <laughs> a code wizard, There's yes. A code yeah, I do a lot of programming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not really. Actually, well, yeah, we do. You do? Oh, wow, yeah. that's going to be kind of neat. Well, well, then we would, it might be a good idea that we'll just kind of we'll just segment into a break. Yeah, take a quick break, pay take some bills. Pay some bills, and we'll grab Angus. Yep, I oh, forgot, we got uh, Angus. Angus will come up, do his thing, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the code. The code. The secret code. The codes. There's, There's so a, many. Is there so many? Oh, it's good. Anyway, it's so thank you. Thank you guys for watching us here at Hibachi Talk on ThinkTech, and we'll be back in about a minute. Hey, everybody. My name is David Chang, and I'm the new host of a new show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you secrets on giving yourself the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests and great mentors of mine from the political, military, business, nonprofit, you name it. So it's something for everybody. You're watching SyncTech Hawaii on SyncTechHawaii.com, which broadcasts six live talk shows from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. every weekday, and then streams earlier shows all night long. Great content for Hawaii from SyncTech. Aloha. It's summertime in Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm your host for Shrink Wrap Hawaii. We're on every Tuesday at 3 o'clock, and we talk about mental health and general health. Join us. Thank you. Aloha. My name is Justine Espiritu, and I am the co-host of Hawaii Farmers Series. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson, and we are live with you every Thursday at 4 p.m. at thinktechhawaii.com. And our show focuses on Hawaii's local food uh, community. We feature not only the farmers that are producing our food, but we also feature the supporters and other folks involved in the community that are trying to promote local agriculture. <laughs> 
Aloha! I'm Chantal Seville, the host of the Savvy Chick Show, which you can watch every Wednesday at 11 a.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. On the Savvy Chick Show, we are all about inspiring and empowering women and girls to be the best they can be by having amazing guests from all around the world. So we hope you'll join us every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Aloha! Hey, aloha everybody and welcome back to Hibachi Talk. Thanks for joining us today. We got Angus in here off the beach. Angus, what's up, buddy? How you doing there, lad? Good to see you, you man. You think I'm on the beach with a suit and tie on? You're beautiful. Oh, yeah, right. You have no <laughs> idea you're talking a boot. And speaking about a boot. We a got boot? A, a boot. We didn't have a Scottish word of the day. But Thank we got, God. We got a Scottish sign of the day. Oh, okay. What does we Scottish sign about? You see what that says? Slow dune. Slow dune. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> slow dune. You didn't go fast. You slow dune. What is that? Dune. Okay. Can you say that three times? I don't have to guess anything on this one. No, though. no. You know what it means. Uh, slow down. Oh, very good. Ah, uh, you're you're almost a bilingual now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not only can you speak it, you can read it. You're there. Good anyway, job. Anyway, I got my wee gadget of the week. Show me. And this, you know, I've been doing a lot of traveling. You know, a lot Show of traveling, and I'm walking and walking and walking. Look at this. You don't have any legs. I didn't. Have, it's right. <laughs> That's why it's even harder. <laughs> You're crawling. I got one leg. That's all I got. Anyway, look at the gadget of the week. It's a moto bag. Is what? For real? Yeah, it's just, yeah, and look at, hey, yeah, you're what, right, it's man. motorized it's luggage? Right. It's motorized luggage. Oh, my goodness. It's got a, yeah, yeah, it holds 85% uh, of what you put in a normal, normal carry on. You can, then you, it does five miles per hour, and you scoot around the airport. And maybe I am not. Ten pounds of luggage. Least, How did you get that through the freaking thing? I don't know. It, and it makes it's the an weight engine. limit. It's TSA approved and FDA approved. Has it got a battery? It's got something in it. Yeah. I don't know what kind of battery, but you know something. <laughs> Anyway, Angus, I got to see a picture of you on your moto bag. Oh, What's yeah, it cost? At $995. No, no, I ain't oh, wow. yeah, nine... Big for me, man. Yeah, but Way it's too big for good. me. You know, I can see me scooting around the airport in that. <laughs> the TSA guy chasing me. You, you'll you'll me. be chasing all the lassies yeah. if you're going. Oh, hey, good idea. I know I like how that. you I like are. That. I like that. I like that. Anyway, it was terrific. Anyway, the moto bag is three. I'm going to get myself one. Oh, yeah, Lord. Yeah. What the, all the money I'm making on this show. <laughs> Not. Anyway, okay. Anyway, that's my gadget of the week. And my, uh, my, my language of the week. And so anyway, as you remember everybody, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! Angus is a wild man. He's gonna get a moto bag. I've never seen anything quite like that. Let me get, let me get uh, onto my security minute. So um, I know school's gonna be coming up soon and some of you guys are starting heading off to university. So there's some questions that you might wanna ask that you may not think about. You might wanna ask that university when you apply about their mass notification, their life safety systems. Um, First of all, does the state or the federal have any recommendations for MNEC and do they follow them? Um, uh, how, does, how does their system compare to other schools that you might be looking at? Make sure you're paying attention to that. Uh, what's the testing procedure that they have for their MNEC system? Who's allowed to use it? Who's going to get trained on it? A um, little bit more about data too. When, they, um, when they've had us an event on, on site, you know, how, do they, how do they protect that data? Uh, what do they do with it? How do they store it? Um, um, a few other things I thought were interesting. Does uh, you know does their, their MNEC system cover all of the uh, the rally points or the evacuation points? So can you can you still hear the information that's going on once they've egressed you to an area that they've told you to go to? Um, how do they handle access control? Uh, do they have some redundancy built into the MNEC? Do they have multiple forms of communication built into that system? Um, and do they provide for language barriers? You know, for uh, um, uh, different types of languages or for um, ADA type folks? So. Uh, make sure you're asking these questions because it's your safety. You're going to spend a lot of time there. I know you're more interested in getting your dorm near the library, which is important, but your safety is important too. So um, there's some MNET questions, and um, take those with you. Take it serious. Wow. Thanks, everybody. All right. Good job. So we'll talk a little bit about MNEC grants with us today. What's MNEC? MNEC is, sorry, Mass Notification Emergency Communications. I should have said that. Thanks for, thanks for, Gordo always gets me off my, what are those called? Acronyms. Acronyms, yeah. Our industry's full of it, right? So, so Grant, you've been with life. So how long have you been with Island Signal as hell? Oh, almost twenty-five years. Okay, so you're, yeah. you know, you're. We can call you an expert in that. He's an expert. You have seen, you have seen a lot of changes. Yes, we have a lot yeah. of changes in the, in the codes, code, in the codes. And, they, codes and, and what do we use now? So NFPA National Fire Protection right, Association. Right. Right. So, we've yeah. got in so some... <clears throat> codes, code books. They remind me of my daughter's. <laughs> he has this books. all in his yeah. brain. They um. It's like an SAT. Well, um, they come out. They they update them. You know, every three years. Okay. I guess that's how NFPA makes their money and stays in business. I think so. Yeah, they like, change. They change. Like science books. Verbiage and code. 
Um, wow. But this one is the NFPA 1 2012, which the state and the county has adopted. In um, when did they adopt it? They, like last they, year? Yeah. They actually, <laughs> Not in it was, 2012. It was, it was 20, <laughs> November of 2015. Yeah. Well, so it, it takes it, it takes it, them a while to adjust. Because when they when they adopt it, they don't adopt everything. They amend certain things. Uh, counties, um, Maui County's code is a little different from Honolulu's and Kauai's. But this is the base document. Wow, that's pretty. No, that's that's the National Fire. Yeah, the National Fire Code. And are there, and there are other codes that we have to comply with as well? Uh, there's the Building Code, okay, which is the International Building Code (IBC). IBC. Now, yeah, does that have fire requirements in it as well, or it do does? they refer back to the other ones? Okay, so how the code works? Yeah, tell us how this works. How do you? Yeah. So, so the build Building Code is, uh, you know, covers all the different kind of occupancies and and things like that. What the requirements are. Okay. Um, and they have a little blurb on you know what kind of fire alarm system you need, like whether it's manual, automatic, uh, high rise, those kind of things. If it's an assembly or church occupancy, if there's a lot of people in or there. Manufacturing right. Or manufacturing. Right. So right. So what the building code uh, says is what you need, and then the fire code is has a little bit of that. Okay. Fire code is what the fire department enforces. Um, it's not just fire alarm. Obviously, it's all kind of things like fireworks and explosives and storing fuel but there's a little chapter in it that talks about okay well if you have a fire alarm system this is what it needs to, what do. It needs to do now we don't, do we have a fire marshal in hawaii oh yes, yeah. we do yeah. we do oh yeah okay we, and they're part of the fire department mm -hmm. so yeah. they're the fire marshal. we have federal yeah. ones also for the for the fed right. side so the right. fed side so is there any ever a conflict in what the code is and what the a county might never <laughs> That's okay. uh, call lean, call that's what we it, it, in our industry industry we call them the authority having jurisdiction. Yeah, AHJ. Ah, yeah, AHJ. You okay. know, because it's, it's 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 law. So it could be that the NFP mm -hmm. NFPA document mm -hmm. may not be as stringent as a local requirement, or vice versa. Well, uh, how to put this nicely? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you have the building code, which is one document. You got right. the fire code, that's another document, mm -hmm, right. and and it's it's a different publisher. It's not NFP. It's IBC that. Okay, publishes. right. So yeah, okay. And, and there's actually when they adopted, they they actually had an amendment that says, uh, for I think it was chapter. 903 it says <laughs> they exited it out and said see the fire code. So that's right. good. Well, yeah. that's good. Right. Um, the AHJ has the final interpretation. Right, is yeah. that he is gets there, to? There's a lot of gray area. But there's things, isn't there? Like like distances and and mm -hmm. and so you can't have strobes can have an impact on like people with um, um, uh, it can epileptics right. Yeah, so there, there's certain control. flash rates and mm -hmm. all these certain well, and tones that. and certain things that have to. And that's, is that fire code or building code? Well, it, it's it's part of the the. Uh oh, got another. Book. Yeah, so this is like I said, like in the fire code, there was just one little, you know, chapter. But this is the, this is the uh, national oh, fire alarm signal code. code. Right. Oh, and this is this is another NFPA document, and and this wow. this really tells you the how. Okay. This and, is this is our bible. And so this so is mass notification stuff, right. yeah. That's this the is how. the one that tells you okay, if you're going to put a strobe in, it's got to be a this. 80 inches on the wall or if it's on the ceiling depending on how high the ceiling is, how bright the strobe needs to be, uh, how you're going to space your your detectors, what kind of detectors do they have? All that kind of stuff, real technical it's, kind of And what thing, about yeah. voice? So the, the mass notification, as I was talking about, is kind of like right. alerting people via voice, alerting them via text, or alerting them via social media. Right, yeah. So is certain, there guidance certain, for that? Certain buildings, and I, and I brought another... Another book. book. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, and actually another thing. So this is... <laughs> this thing. is... Yeah, toys. <laughs> you gotta love this guy. It's like show and tell, man. Yeah, yeah. show and tell. Well, nobody knows this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is <laughs> but they might be leaving the building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the... Can I have one of those? Hillbilly's on the run. <laughs> that's that's the international standard to evacuate. So okay. Japanese, Japanese, yeah, they come here, they should know. Okay. They call it oh, a temporal so, three yeah. signal. Oh, so that's yeah. international standard. Mm -hmm. So no matter where I go in, if the you hear that, run. Globe, yeah, you hear that, you know to evacuate. You get right. the heck out of there. But they right. don't use it for like tsunami, or do they? Is that only for fire? No, yeah, that's just, just a, a fire evacuation. So evac. that means egress the building you're in. You get, or you get your sorry butt out of there. Yeah. Right. Wow. So you, you, you talked about mass notification. Yeah, so with okay. voice and things right. like that, because that, you can hear that thing going, right? It's yeah, so, so loud. That, that's a signal that's standard for you know, smaller buildings. But if you have a high rise or a building that has a lot of occupants, and you need to give specific instructions like, you know, go to on the mop, place. yeah, or do not use the main entrance or something like right. that. Or, or maybe even some buildings say, if, you, if you're not on the fire floor, just stay where you're at. 
Then yeah, you, then you need speakers. So okay, yeah. right. I've been in a building where it said, you know, the, a fire alarm. Please remain in your unit. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so, how do they judge it? Is it these are by like decibels, like by how loud they are, and yeah, the, the and the voice stuff's a little more complex. Right. Yeah, it's got to be a certain decibel level. It needs to be uh, 15 decibels above the ambient sound level, okay. that kind of thing. So, you know, and what what, what things could you recommend? You know, that that um, our viewers, you know, things to make sure that they have, you know, that they have in their homes or in their condos or whatever. Um, even those, you know, some that aren't compliant, right, today, on today's code. Yeah, what are, the, what are the... It's NFPA 12, from one from 2012. That building may have built in 1975. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what should they do? Well, the first thing you, you want to make sure is, or the property management, is that the, the system gets inspected annually. Okay. And so there's a maintenance aspect to it, just right. like your, your car needs a safety... You call sticker. Island Signal for that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, and, and one of the things that the fire department does when they, the, the plans review guys in the building department right. is, is when there is a change to the building, uh, that will often trigger a requirement to upgrade your system. Oh, really? Right. So yeah. if I do a certain change to a building, they may say, okay, now you've got to make it compliant with NFPA yeah. Well, what we say, the current, the current fire the current Whatever the current code right. is. But that could be a real problem if you don't want to spend all yeah, that money. Yeah, or if you, if you didn't budget for it. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of you know shopping centers or, or condos that may have a retail, uh, first floor. You know, like a, a, a store or a kitchen. Right. We've seen that happen. Where ah. or even for schools, they'll get a new. You know, they'll have an old system that's a bell base. You know, it's not okay. a temporal three; it's a bell. Right. Um, and they'll put in a temporary facility. And hey, that thing is, you know, it's new. It's going to have that temporal three horn. Right. But you get out of the building and you hear bells. Bell. Bells. Like a steady, yeah. And the fire department says, oh, you know, you, you're going to have to upgrade the rest of your Time campus now. Yeah. Good. Wow. And they you should know. want to. So part of the design, right. part of responsible property management, property ownership, I think, is, is keeping life safety systems up to date. I right. Mean, right. You know, and we, at least budgeting for it. Yeah, yeah. You know, make sure it's in your reserve study. And uh, I, yeah. well, now that I'll go back to my condo, I'll make sure I'll right. do that. Yeah. Are you, you, on, the, are you on the budgeting by a, committee? Uh, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> $3,000 special assessment. Yeah. But yeah, the wow. big the big impact, especially for the condo owners, is yeah. the, one of the things that the fire department really harps on is, is audibility. Yeah, but so you think, can hear it. And, and a lot of these buildings that were built in, in Makiki, say, yeah. you know, with with the cinder block walls. Yeah. They had uh, one bell in the middle of the hallway. Yep. I'm, and the guy at the end, he can't hear it. I lived in yeah. one of those. I mean, wow. that's all we had. That's all we had. So anyway, update but, your systems. So folks. update the systems. I think even if you want to do something personal, right? Put something, a fire detect, a smoke detector, you can buy them. Right. Yeah. Right? And where you live, right? Yeah, you need you to have the buy smoke them and, and change yeah. the batteries every New Year's or something so mm -hmm. you don't w get waking up at two o'clock in the Good morning. Good job, Gordon. Anyway, <laughs> thank you, Andrew. Um, Grant, Pleasure having you on the show. Wow, it's great. it goes so, fast. It goes yeah, fast. Awesome, and so you're with Island Signal and Sound. So Island Signal. Anyone wants to know? He knows the code back and forth. He knows it like <laughs> no one else. Yeah, but, yeah, so anyway, here we are, number 79, in our collectors series of solo cups. All right. We I don't send, we don't send yes, anyone yours, away empty-handed. It's unreward. No, no good deed does not go uh, unrewarded. <laughs> anyway, we want to thank you all for joining us here today. We want to thank Emily, Zuri, and Nick once again for helping and Jay. us. And Jay. for helping us pull this off. And as we always say at the end of the show, and we never gave you a heads up I on did. that, one, two, three, how, how you, you doing? doing?